everyone, this is Flora. Um, this time I get to do an interview with a data scientist at Facebook and she shared about um, what she had learned during her five years at Facebook. It's not a lot of information about how she got the job, rather it's more about what she had learned during her job. I guess this one would probably not um, be as useful if you are still trying to get into the fields, but if you, you just entered the data science or analyst uh, field, I think this will be a, a pretty useful video for you. Laura, um, today I have my friend Cao Yan with me. We're both very proud moms, and that's how we become friends. And she, and she, she is also um, a data analyst at Facebook. And you all know that I do stories about careers and different positions and roles in tech companies. So today we're gonna share some stories and her findings and learnings through her five years of being a data scientist at Facebook. Hi! <laughs> so, five years at Facebook. Mm -hmm. I remember you told me that you actually were a PhD student mm -hmm. and you're not majoring in data. What, were, what was that? So, um, I got my PhD in HCI, standing for Human Computer Interaction. Okay. So, it's like a lot of our UX researchers who work at Facebook, they have uh, degrees in HCI. It's really an interesting field. It's like allows you to understand users' behavior mm -hmm. from a scientific approach. So I thought it was pretty fun. But personally, I also had degrees in physics while I was in China. Okay. So I do think my strength is more on the quantitative side and less on the qualitative side of UX research. That's why I pursued a DS uh, position at Facebook rather than UX. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but I still think from academic field to, you know, uh, industry, there is a difference. So uh, w what is the first thing that you, you have to overcome in your first year in Facebook? Oh, <laughs> uh, it's very different. So definitely do not be a scientist at your work. <laughs> I think that's a pretty big thing to remember. So when I first joined Facebook, I was like, oh my god, so many data, I can do so many fancy things. And then I got lost. I spent like mm -hmm. so much time playing with data, doing different visualizations. But then my manager is just like, how are you going to use that? And I was like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So that forced me to realize that in the actual industry work, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you spend your time to answer questions that actually matter, to use data, to help product teams to make decisions, okay. rather than just like showing fancy data in mm -hmm. fancy visualizations, those won't help. Oh, okay. I think that's basically a change of mindset, whether to focus on data or to focus on the direction of the product that you are actually working on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then what about second year? So um, in the second year, I think the biggest learning for me was that really, really a lot of time should be spent on communication, mm -hmm. both before the analysis and after the analysis. Let's, let me briefly talk about the after analysis part. So after you get your analysis down, mm -hmm. you have all of these data, you have all of these insights, you want product teams to take your insights, mm -hmm. right? So we really needed to spend a lot of time to communicate your insights to different people, mm -hmm. to learn about how to make your communication more effective. Mm -hmm. At that time, I don't think it was my strength at all. Mm -hmm. So definitely I had to spend enough time doing it. And also because I found it difficult. So I was like super reluctant to do it. And that means nobody was taking my data seriously to make the next steps, right? Mm -hmm. That's really like not the ideal outcome. So I really learned that like to be a really good data scientist, mm -hmm. you want to spend a really, really good amount of time 
post analysis, to share your results with people, to communicate more proactively, to think about your audience, to use the language that's appropriate for your audience to take, to be really direct, mm -hmm. re really uh, uh, pushing forward mm -hmm. to like make sure that product teams will take your insights to the next step, to the mm -hmm. like just follow along in this okay. process. It's like a really good learning experience for me. Okay. Um so going going to the fourth year, what do you think is your strength at that point? My strengths, um I think this is something every everyone should really spend in time to to identify for themselves. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think it was like really important that I spend time to try different things first. Like I, w I want to understand whether say um, doing technical work, doing more the data engineering oriented work is mm -hmm. my strength or whether analytical or whether having frameworks ready is mm -hmm. more my strength or mentoring other people, growing other people is mm -hmm. my strength, etc. So I actually spend time to try these things out through different ways. And then I got to learn from this experience that one, whether the experience actually made me happy. Mm -hmm. I think your strengths should be something that makes you really, really happy about like okay. when you are doing these things. Even though they might be difficult things to work on, mm -hmm. but you should feel happy about them mm -hmm. and two whether you actually like see a clear path for you to get better okay. to the next level for this dimension so I think both are super important mm -hmm. if your answer is yes to both of them that is your strengths so to me in particular I think analytical and technical mm -hmm. are like both my strengths and also I feel very comfortable very happy to look into those things while like growing other people or mentoring other people is not necessarily so for me at this current stage so focus not uh, focus and also build on top of your strengths is also personally I believe to be the most important way mm -hmm. to um, pursue success in your career so that's why I definitely like make sure that I spend majority of my time on these two dimensions mm -hmm. to uh, improve my uh, career. Okay, and the five year is the most exciting year. It's when we become mothers. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so, yeah. so exciting and so busy. So as a mother and also a working data scientist at mm -hmm. Facebook, do you have any trick for us to um, to uh, work and be with your baby more efficiently. I think for a new mom, it's really difficult to find the balance point mm -hmm. for work-life balance. <laughs> so um, I have to say the first two months were really difficult mm -hmm. after I went back to work after a few months of maternity leave. So it was like super difficult mm. actually. Like during the day I was keeping thinking about my baby <laughs> and then I couldn't really concentrate at work. It's it's just real, right? Yeah, yeah. And also I've been on leave for so long. Yes. There were like so many things for me to get contacts on, to understand, to learn. So it's definitely a lot of things happening at the mm. workplace that I need to catch up. But meanwhile, my focus was not there because I was keeping thinking about the yeah. baby. Right? Mm -hmm. so, I remember at some point, uh, our babies were all at, were both at daycare. At some point, um, we were both like, even though we have some work to do, we have to stay at home <laughs> because our babies were sick for like, for like. Good, a good part of the month for yeah. consecutive months. So <laughs> that was really hard times when we remember. Yeah, yeah, same here. It was definitely hard. Uh, but as I like, I guess as time goes on, mm -hmm. I start to get better at that. I guess like mentally, I had to realize that it's not the best way to use my time at work. And mm -hmm. also, 
I have to be confident that the baby got good care at the daycare during the daytime. So there's no need for me to just keep thinking about her. That doesn't really make any influence. So I start to just become more efficient at work. And then I start to actually have bandits to think about how to get that work-life balance. Right? So I think a few learnings here. One is that make sure you identify your most important priorities. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you utilize your time more effectively. Like right now, I definitely do not really spend much time looking at my phone or looking at different websites, etc. Mm -hmm. Like my time at work is like really time at work. Mm -hmm. And also my time with my daughter is really like time with mm -hmm. her rather than like, hey, 50% of my attention is with her or the other 50% is somewhere oh. else. <laughs> yeah. So um, definitely, I think these two are definitely pretty important. I guess the third one is to like have, um, how would you say that, have reflection Okay. like once in a while like think about what went out well in the past week and what did not go mm -hmm. out very well in the past week so that you can learn from the experience because as a new mom like being a mom is challenging being a working mom is also challenging mm -hmm. you just need to like keep your iterative approach to get better at this to make sure you get a good balance point Great. Thank you so much for answering our questions. <laughs> Thank you. So if you want more um, content, please subscribe me and like me so that I push more content out. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.